Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game The Guild of Merchant Explorers. This was sent to me by AEG and is designed by Matthew Dunstan and Brett J. Gilberts. The Queen has sent out a call to the Guild of Merchant Explorers, asking brave adventurers to voyage to all corners of the Kingdom of Tigome. While the kingdom is flourishing, its maps have not been updated in some time and its great cities have lost contact with one another. With your team of explorers, you will journey over rough seas, towering mountains, vast deserts, and, and lush grasslands to establish trade routes between cities and discover new villages that have emerged. Let me show you how to play. So, in the Guild of Merchant Explorers, your goal is to earn coins by exploring your map, discovering villages, completing trade routes, uncovering ruins, and visiting discovery towers over the course of four eras. Anytime you earn money, you just take over the supply and keep it value side down beside your board. After four eras, the game ends and the player with the most money is the winner. Now, each era takes place over several turns. You do your turn simultaneously, placing explorers on the map on these spaces according to the reveal card. So, on this map, uh, you got different spaces. There are blank terrain spaces of different types. Um, there are coin spaces. I'll go through all these in a second. Now, at the start of each turn, uh, you take the deck of cards and you reveal one. So this one means you have to place three explorers on uh, a straight line of water tiles. Now, these are the golden rules of exploration. How exploration works is you must place your explorer adjacent to one of your villagers or one of your explorers. Your explorers are these cubes. You always place them one at a time. Um, Whenever you explore and resolve map features, you do it as soon as those requirements are met. You may place fewer explorers than a card show. So in this case, you could place two or one if you wanted. Um, so at the start of the game, this is your starting point. That is your capital space. Uh, so let's say I decide, okay, I'm gonna do three in a straight line. I'll do one, two, three, like that. Um, remember, you can only place cubes next to existing cubes you have on the board or villages. Your capital counts as a village. Let's say the next card is one of these mountain spaces. Okay, uh, I can decide, oh, I can put it here and get a coin. I can put it here, get a coin. Either way, let's say I do this. That gives me a coin uh, and another cube placed. So you go through each of these cards. These are the possible cards, including two desert, two grassland, two of any uh, adjacent tiles. Um, you also have era cards, which I'll get to in a second. When an era card is drawn, um, you draw two cards from the uh, exploration deck. And this gives you a choice of two powers to choose from. This one says, explore any number of connected sea spaces in a straight line. And this one says, Explore one mountain space and explore up to five spaces adjacent to this mountain space. Um, so let's say I choose this one. So what happens is this becomes my new era one power. It activates immediately. So I could be like, okay, I'm going to do this straight line. Boop, 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 and go like that. Now what happens is this is now permanently in the deck. And so every time this card gets drawn, I get to do this power. In later eras, if I uh, new cards get added, in era two, the two card gets added, the three card gets added, and then in the fourth era, this card gets added, which you can choose one of them. So every time that appropriate card is pulled, you activate the power of that choosing. Here's just another example. This one, explore up to five sea spaces. This one, explore a continuous path up to four mountain and or sea spaces. So if this was my two power and the two card was chosen, um, I get to activate this power. Villages are points from which you can explore. Um, so you discover new villages by fully exploring regions in a single era. When you explore every space in a region, including the cities, uh, you must immediately replace one of them with a village. So for example, if you see this mountain region here, which has three uh, tiles on it, if I explore all three, then I have to replace one of them, let's say this one, with a village. A village is useful because at the end of the era, all of your explorers are taken off, but your villages remain, which means these villages act as new starting points you can start from in future eras. Discovery towers like these uh, are very valuable uh, wild terrain spaces. Let's say I managed to 
go all the way here and I discover it. The first one you discover is worth six, po uh, six coins. The second one is worth eight. The third is worth 10 and the fourth is worth 14. One thing I forgot to mention about villages, whenever you make a village, depending on what era you in, you earn coins. So if I made a village in the first era, it's worth one coin, then two, then three, then four in subsequent eras. Coin spaces are very simple. As soon as you place a cube on it, you just get the coin from the space. Ruin spaces are these sunken ships. If I just explore one of those spaces, I get to draw a treasure card. This one means I get to put down a cube for free. This one, and that's the same thing. Um, there are different ones like um, some give you coins right away. Some of them are like pots where you can collect. The more pots you collect, the more coins at the end, so on and so forth. There are some end game ones as well. Um, cities with these numbers on them, you're trying to connect uh, to new trade routes. So let's say I connected this city, which has a three on it, and I connected this city, which has a three on it. Um, you multiply the two numbers, uh, that would give you nine coins. And then what you do is you place a trading post. When you place a trading post, that means that city cannot be scored in a trading route again. You can still explore it, but uh, it won't give you, it can't be connected to another city. This city, however, since there's no trading post on it, I could connect to a future city uh, and do the multiplier again. Finally, there are three shared goals. There's uh, six for each different map. There are four different maps in this in the base game. Um, some of them have additional rules I'm not gonna go over because it's kind of fun for you to discover those on your own. Um, but so it might be something like, place two trading posts on cities valued three or greater. Place two discovery towers. Discover a village on a region of five spaces or larger. If you are the first player to do it, you get 10 coins and you mark it with a cube and everyone else after that gets just five coins. And uh, that's pretty much the game. Once you go through a deck, you uh, wipe the board of all your exploration cubes, but you keep your villages um, and any other symbols, including trading posts. Um, you put markers on ships if you've already explored those. That way you can keep track of what you've already done. Um, and then you add the next era's card uh, to the deck. Uh, in era two, you would add this card to it. Um, and so the deck will get slightly bigger and bigger each time for each era, and you'll activate your powers more and more often. And then in, in a subsequent era, when you're starting out, instead of starting just from the capital, I could start from this village, because I have a village here. Or if I had a village over here, I could start there and build off from there. The only rule is you have to only, you have to explore cubes next to your villages and or other cubes. And yeah, otherwise that's it. There are other powers and treasures, but, and other goals and maps, but otherwise that's pretty much the base game. Uh, that's how you play. So this game has one of the most boring covers and titles I've ever seen, but this is a really fun game. I'm a sucker for a good flip and play game, and this one has some very fun mechanics that I really enjoyed that I don't see a lot in other ones. Uh, first off, I love that core concept of, okay, make as much progress as you can this era, filling your map with cubes uh, and villages, but then the board gets wiped besides your villages, but you keep those points of progress in the villages. It's a mechanic you see in some games like roguelikes where even if you have to start over, you know, quote unquote, you still make concrete progress towards your goal, which I love how satisfying that feeling is of, okay, I've got more villages, I can branch out from more spots next time. There are fun map features to go for. I enjoyed connecting the cities for trade routes and discovering the towers, getting those points. The ruins were cool, uh, but I wish the treasures you earned were a little more interesting. Also, very minor complaint, but I hate that all the coins are silver. They come in like one, five, ten quantities. Just make them like gold, silver, bronze or whatever. Don't make them all the same. Like I get you're trying to make it, oh, secret scoring. Who cares? Just make them different. It's so fucking annoying. Anyway, uh, I always love a game where there are shared goals you're racing towards. That's always a fun mechanic. But by, by far my favorite mechanic was unlocking those special abilities during eras. And then in future eras, you get to trigger them over and over again. Getting that like era one power and being like, okay, every time the era one power era one card is revealed, I get to do that power. That's great. It's very satisfying choosing these powerful skills that only you have 
and getting to trigger them over and over again. And then of course the sadist in me loves watching people grow when the wrong card gets flipped at the wrong time. Like, oh, why this one now? Oh, I needed this one later. I love that. Ah, the joy of flipping plays. The game also offers several different maps for some solid replayability, plus you're not going to get through all those abilities and treasures right away, so there's a lot of replay value here. Um, this is really a gem that is hidden underneath a layer of dull, thematically, it looks like a snooze fest, but everything about the gameplay is really fun, it's rewarding, and it's super easy to learn. Uh, I would definitely recommend this one, very fun, even though it looks boring as hell. It's a good time.